Hey everybody, welcome back to Life in Room 27. I'm Miss Robinson and I am back today with another math tutorial video for you guys. So today we're gonna go over lesson 3.6. Yesterday, or in my last video, we talked about adding decimals using a quick picture. Today we're gonna to talk about how to subtract decimals using a quick picture. And just remember our quick pictures are used to model what we would be doing if we were actually working with our base 10 blocks that we used in class today. So these lessons are very similar, but of course the one big difference is yesterday you were adding, today you were subtracting. The other difference is that yesterday you had to be concerned with having too many of a certain type of piece too many tenths, too many hundredths, or something like that. Today, we're gonna to look at, well, what do you do if you don't have enough pieces? Like maybe you only have two hundredths, but you need to subtract seven hundredths. What do you do then? So this lesson, and yesterday's lesson, is just meant to model for you what you're actually doing when you're adding and subtracting decimals without a model. So I'm going to flip the camera around, I'm going to set up a whiteboard, I'm gonna give you guys some examples, and then I will come back with some closing thoughts for you. So I'll see you in a second. So here's our first example, and what I've done to get us started is I have modeled the number or the decimal two and 82 hundredths. The first thing that you're gonna do when you're subtracting decimals is you're modeling the number that is being subtracted from first. So I have drawn two holes to represent the two in the ones place, I have drawn eight tenths to represent the eight in the tenths place, and I've drawn two hundredths to represent the two in the hundredths place. So that's the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna model the number that is being subtracted from. Then you're gonna to go to the furthest place value position on the right of the number that you're subtracting, and in this case, it's the seven in the hundredths place. This is telling me that I need to subtract seven hundredths. Now, if you notice in my picture, I do not have enough hundredths to take away seven. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my tenths, I'm going to cross it out, and I'm going to regroup that as 10 hundredths because as a fifth grader, I know that there are 10 hundredths in one tenth. So I'm gonna come over here and draw one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten hundredths. Now, I can subtract seven hundredths. So I'm gonna cross those out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I am now done with subtracting the seven hundredths that is in this decimal one and 47 hundredths. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to look in the tenths place and I'm supposed to subtract four tenths from this picture that remember represents two and 82 hundredths. Luckily, I have enough, so I'm gonna cross out one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, and four tenths, and I'm done there. Now I'm gonna move on to the ones place. I'm going to subtract one whole. Again, luckily enough, I have enough, so I'm gonna cross out the one whole. I've subtracted. Now I need to be able to look at this what's left of my quick picture, I should say, and figure out, okay, well, this is what's left. So what exactly is the answer to this particular problem? So I'm gonna bring down what's left. I have one whole, I have three of these tenths, and then I have a total of one, two, three, four, five hundredths left. One, two, three, four, five. And I now need to represent that as an actual decimal. So I have one whole, so I'm gonna put that in the ones place. Now moving on to decimal, so I'm gonna put my decimal point there. I have three tenths, so I'm gonna put a three in the tenths place. And I have five hundredths, so I'm gonna put a five in the hundredths place. This tells me that two and 82 hundredths subtract, or let me rephrase that. This tells me that when I take one and 47 hundredths and I subtract that from two and 82 hundredths, my answer will be one and 35 hundredths based on my quick picture. So that's the first example. I'm gonna show you another example. Now on to our second example. In the second example, we are going to subtract 18 hundredths and we're gonna subtract that from 62 hundredths. So remember the first thing that you wanna do is you want to model the decimal that is being subtracted from. 
which in this case will be 62 hundredths. So I'm going to model that first. I have a six in the tenths place, so I'm going to draw six tenths. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have a two in the hundredths place, so I'm gonna draw two hundredths. One, two. Now notice there's a zero in the ones place right here, which is why I have no whole pieces shown. I only have six tenths and two hundredths, which is 62 hundredths altogether. I am now going to be subtracting 18 hundredths. So to start, I'm gonna look for the furthest place value position on the right, which is the eight. This is in the hundredths place, so this tells me I need to subtract eight hundredths. Now, as you can see, I only have two. I do not have enough to subtract right now, so I'm going to regroup one of my tenths because I know there are 10 hundredths and one tenth. So I'm gonna convert this from a tenth into 10 hundredths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Now I'm gonna tell myself, now I can go ahead and take away 8 hundredths. So I'm gonna cross out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm done with my hundredths. Now moving on to the tenths place. I need to take one tenth away. I have enough, I crossed out one tenth. Now I need to say, okay, well what is my answer? This is what's left. So I have one, two, three, four tenths. So I have four tenths and I'm putting my decimal there because I know it's four tenths. And then I have four hundredths left, so I'm gonna put a four in the hundredths place. So that tells me that 62 hundredths minus 18 hundredths is going to be 44 hundredths. So that's it, that's really all that you need to do. It's really not that complicated if you just take your time, go one step at a time, make sure your quick picture represents the number that is being subtracted from, and then just subtract one place value position at a time. If you don't have enough in that one particular place value position, so in this example, I only started with 200, so I had to regroup one of my tenths so that I could subtract 800. If you don't have enough of one place value position, you go to the next, you regroup so that you can actually subtract in the end. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and give you guys some closing thoughts. I'll see you in just a moment. All right, we're back. We've done a couple of examples together. So of course I wanna give you some closing thoughts. Closing thoughts number one is just remember when you're subtracting, you are only going to model the number that is being subtracted from first. Yesterday when we added, you modeled both add-ins. Today we're not modeling both because only one of them is the number or the decimal that is being subtracted from. So you will only model one when you're subtracting. The second thing is, is you always need to make sure that you are organized and you are keeping track of what you're doing if you need to exchange some pieces for different pieces. So if you're crossing out a tenth to create ten hundredths, then you need to make sure that you cross out that tenth and then go ahead and make those ten hundredths because you don't want to have pieces there that should no longer be there. So being clean and very organized and very patient with yourself is going to be key. So. After that, it's just a matter of making sure you know how to interpret your diagram or your quick picture, I should say. When you've done all the subtraction, what is the answer that your quick picture is giving you? And as long as you follow the steps of being patient, careful, and clean, and you've crossed out the pieces as you've exchanged them, you should be good to go. So for today's lesson and for tonight's homework, you do have to use this strategy. You may not subtract your decimals in any other way because I need to make sure that you understand how to do this should you see it on a quiz or a test. So as always, I hope this video was helpful to you and your parents if they are watching. Thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye everyone.